point number one. The quotation of Habakkuk 2 4, recorded in a, a section of Hebrews 10 36 to 39, which a greater context takes you all the way back to verse 32. If you have a study Bible, you will see that. And it is because of Habakkuk 2 4 that I label the series I'm going to do with you live by faith because it comes from Habakkuk 2 4. And I'm certainly going to show you and discuss with you the three places that this is quoted. Habakkuk 2 4 is quoted in the New Testament. Habakkuk 2 4 is quoted three times in the New Testament which shows you that it was a prominent doctrine in the Old Testament and a prominent doctrine in the New Testament. Okay? Now, the faith cycle, living by faith, comes from Habakkuk. The faith cycle comes from Hebrews 11.1, 1, the mechanics of it. The writer of Hebrews wrote down the mechanics. How does faith work? Well, he said this way. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. And then to show you that this is the mechanics of how to live by faith, he goes in and makes a, writes a whole chapter on the subject and gives you all of these marvelous examples out of people that you know about from the Bible. Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and, uh, you know, Enoch and Noah and, you know, the list goes on, and he included women, too. We have Sarah and people. It wasn't that people don't under, know a little bit about faith. You can go to any church, and they're going to talk. And then for the Christian church, is how does it work? And so the writer came back, and he showed you in the New Covenant, it showed you how it worked. In the Old Covenant, and it works the same way. <laughs> Habakkuk 2 4. What Hebrews 11 1 does is give us the doctrine of the faith cycle. You can't get it from Habakkuk 2 4. The writer made sure you would get it, so he, he told you there's two sides to faith. He wants you to live by faith, okay, you got to learn how it works. Modus operandi, you got to know how it works. It begins with hearing, moves there. To, so he shows you a cycle. On one side, assurance. On the other side, conviction. See, this is where you're, you're building the faith com complex in your life through the word of God. Over here is where it becomes. This is inhale, that's exhale. You know, 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17. Hebrews 10.38, which is a reference to Habakkuk 2.4, is found three times in the Bible, two by Paul and one by the writer of Hebrews. And once again, this becomes a strong argument for Paul being the writer of Hebrews, wrote about it in Galatians 3.11, and makes a strong case for Paul may have written Hebrews. There's also evidence that he probably didn't. So, but I'm just, you know, I'm, I know God wrote it. and that's important to me. I know God wrote it. But I'm just, I'm just telling you, three times it's mentioned. I, yeah, I'd go look in the kitchen first. And then maybe walk around. Sounds like a pan. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see how poised you are. We got people up and looking. Uh, so we have three references. All three references are talking about living by faith and Hebrews. 11, 1 is working off from that. The others are too, by the way. They're, they're working really hard trying to show you 
that you've got to understand the mechanics of how faith works in the Christian life. Yeah, okay. We Look down the hall there and see if a doorknob fell down. Yeah, it did sound like a pan. Well, anyhow, back to the subject. It, if the rapture comes, it won't matter, will it? So Bible study won't either. So here's my point. This teaches that the faith cycle was an important doctrine both in the Old Covenant and the New Covenant throughout the entire Bible. These three quotes from Habakkuk 2.4 are interesting because it shows that the, the faith cycle was an important doctrine to both the Jews and the Gentiles. Because when he writes to Roman and Galatians, he's writing to Gentile believers. When the book of, when the book of Hebrews is written, he's writing to Jewish believers. So it, for me, that's really interesting. That's, uh, that's, that's, that's very interesting. The second thing I want to discuss with you is the Greek grammar of Hebrews 11.1 1 does teach the two sides of modus operandi or the mechanics of the faith cycle. Would you find it? All right. Does ceiling tile fall down or no? Okay. Then we go, go look for squirrels. The last time the ceiling thing fell down, we were after squirrels. I ran this thing all over the place. I finally called the pest control guy. I went, they are really fast. <laughs> they are really fast. Yeah. And they hide from you the most inner. I don't want to get in it. <laughs> but uh, I thought, if only I had my gun. Now talk, man. Uh, can't carry it in Walmart, but I'd have carried it in the church to get him. Now, watch this now. Now, faith is assurance of things hoped for, conviction of things not seen. I mentioned, and now it becomes important to you that there are no definite articles because in the Greek language, this is important because without a definite article, it shifts emphasis away from something. It, in other words, it, it shifts emphasis. A definite article is like putting a spotlight on something. And when it's not there, then you have to, it puts it on, on other things. It puts on all the interactions of what's going on. And so that's important. So what's going on is this. This is very obvious. Here's what's going on. I'm taking this off the board. Um, he says, here's faith. And he, he doesn't call it the faith. He says, and here's two mechanical parts to it. Assurance and conviction. Right? I was going to abbreviate assurance, but I thought I better not. Uh, conviction. My grandkids may be watching. Uh, they go, you know, he just read it in the board. How do you know that? You're only in the first grade. Well, he's not even that. He's kidding, Garden. But anyhow, taking no chances. In the Greek language, when you don't have it, it places emphasis on that. So the, the emphasis has moved away from that because we don't have a definite article. It's moved over here, and it's moved over here. Do you see that? There are no definite articles on them either, which throws it down here to hope and not seen. The tail that wags the dog. <laughs> See, that's really interesting. Without the, without, the, without the definite articles, he says, he puts it there and he makes it a subject. It, we, it's, in, it's the nominative. It's nominative case. It's a nominative case. It's a subject. Faith is. This right here is a predicate nominative. That's predicate nominative. And guess what that is? Yeah, you're right. It's a predicate nominative. You understand? The nominative, 
this is important here, this is important here, working off the verb imi, the main verb imi. It's a predicate nominative. In other words, it's connected to the dynamics of the verb. The subject, no definite article. The subject is faith. Assurance is a key element. Conviction is a key element. They both have, they both have, they're not in themselves it. It's what it's, ta the tail is important. You understand? Faith moves to assurance. Assurance moves to hope. Faith moves to conviction. Conviction works to not seen. To pragma. Pragma. Things not seen. The Greek structure here is just. Now, this word assurance, I'll, I'll show you the Greek word in a moment, but it literally means, what it, what it really means, this word assurance in the Greek language, means it, it means to stand firm in faith. To stand firm in faith. To stand firm in faith. And, and so what it means, it means to stand I put these things on the wrong side, but I just want to show it to you. It means to stand, it means to stand firm in the concept of uh, the faith cycle. Faith is assurance. The word assurance means to steadfast. That should be steadfast. I don't, you know, when I was a kid, you could spell it either way. You could spell it S T A. But uh, when I wrote it, S-T-E-D, I don't know. Did I put an A in yours? Okay. The assurance and conviction, both dealing with faith. De both words dealing with a, a very important element of faith, right? Faith is assurance. <laughs> the predicate nominative of those words is very important. Nominative, predicate nominative. A predicate nominative is a way to define faith. A predicate nominative, a predicate nominative uh, emphasizes or defines faith, whatever the subject is. Faith is assurance. Faith is conviction. All right? So on your back page, let me flip it over. I put the face cycle up there. I drew a line through it so you could have the one side. There's two sides to it. There's the assurance of things hoped for side, and there's the conviction of things not seen side. On the assurance side, it comes, faith comes by hearing, and then by understanding and believing, it becomes a belief. The belief is transferred. The belief is transferred down into application is ready. It's re on the launching pad of application, ready to go. The, the car is all gassed up when we're ready to go. And when God gets ready to complete that promise, you know, what he's promised he's able to perform. When he gets through performing, then we have it. And we have the conviction side. The conviction side is about the belief that God, it, it's the belief in God of Romans 4.21, that what God promised you, he will deliver. He's not, he didn't give you faith in order for you to bring it to completion. He gave you faith so you would trust him to bring it to completion. That's why the faith rest technique is placed between application and completion. Because this is where we get stuck in the mud sometime and begin to question our faith, begin to question God, because we think it ought to be right on the money, it ought to be there because I prayed for it, and it ought to be there. And it is there, but it's there upstairs. And God will bring it in your life when you can appreciate when he brings it. Not in your demand, not in your timetable. And when, you, when he does bring it, you'll be so thankful for him. Well, and so I wanted to, sh I wanted to sh show you that because that's what Hebrews 11.1 1 is teaching you. The third thing about the Greek grammar of Hebrews 11.1 1 
it plays another important doctrinal role in the mechanics because <coughs> I'm going to put faith back up here and, and I'm going to put assurance on this side and conviction. This was nominative and these are predicate nominatives. So we've seen that. Right? We've seen that. Notice that in, in point three, they have each of these, no definite articles means there's something else going on. In assurance, we have hope. And over here, it's not, it's phragma. Things not seen. Now watch this. It's really important. These right here. Now you remember these are predicate nominatives. This is the tail of the dog. Watch this. They are present passive participles. Present passive participles. Both of them. Both of them. Present passive participles. Both of them. In the Greek language, these two participles in the present tense are looking for a main verb. A participle functions off a main verb. Like infinitives work off nouns. They, participles work off them. And it depends on what the main verb does. If the main verb is aorist, it does one thing. If it's present, it does another. If it's perfect, it does another. I'm just telling you the way it is. When the main verb is a present active indicative as it is in our verse, When the present tense here is a present tense here, see that? Those are present tenses. The Greek language says, then the action that's going on here is simultaneous. The action is occurring at the same time. Faith is, and this is the action going on. For faith to get activated, you have to understand that faith is the assurance, and assurance has a way of operation, and is conviction, and it has a way of operation under the title of faith, energized by the verb. The verb is I me. In the English, the word is. There is no verb like I me. There's nothing like I me. I me, in the Bible, I me is an absolute status quo verb, an absolute status quo verb of existence. And the reason it is that way in the Bible, because it identifies God. When, when, the, writer, when the writer of the scripture says, um, I am that I am, in reference to God, who are who is God? God said, I am that I am. He, he is the only one of true existence. Everything else has come from him. Anything else that has existence comes from him. Oh, oh, oh. That's what it means, I am that I am. No existence. God is existence, and there is no existence apart from that. You're here today because he created you. And you're human because he made you in the image according to his likeness. Faith is. 
an absolute status quo verb of existence of God in your life. The absolute existence of God in your life when you walk by faith and not by sight is evidence of the exact, that you're trusting God, that, that everything that exists, every matter in your life, every matter in your life is in the hands of God. Oh, if I could get you to believe that. Uh, if I could get you, if I could get you to believe that for a week, it would change your life. I mean, change it. I'm talking about dramatic. This is one of these things is, oh boy. If, if the one about all existence or what? Oh, the, what, what would change your life? If you could believe that all the matters, everything that matters in your life, everything, I mean, from getting up in the morning, brushing your teeth, I mean, everything that matters in your life that makes your day an existence, everything that makes your day an existence is from God. And when you live, when you live by faith, when you walk by faith, when you live faith, you're telling God, I'm putting all the matters of my life in your hands. Because I know I've, 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 I've had the experience of life in my hands. It don't work well. And he wants you to come back to your origin of existence, which is God. There's two wonderful things happen to you once you're born into the world, born. You become aware of yourself and your needs. <laughs> then you have to figure out what wah means. Are they hungry? Are they wet? And the existence of God. And the most important of those two things is this existence of God because you your existence is because of his. You have to understand that principle because everything that matters, everything that is involved as matter in your life, pragma, that's pragma. All the things, all the practical things that make reality, that bring reality to your life on a daily basis, Need to be in the hands of God. You need to have faith is the assurance of things hoped for. It is the conviction of things not seen. It's powerful. It's just powerful stuff right here. All that in the Greek language. And it just makes that thing come alive in my soul. I look at all that and I go like, oh, oh God. Can you break that down and make that simple? I'm kind of like you when I get it. It's like, can you break that down and make that simpler? And I go like, boy, I don't know. And I'll tell you, the only way it gets simpler is you have to live it and see that everything that matters about your life of matter is better off in the hands of God. And when you walk by faith, you put it in the hands of God. When you live by faith, you put it in the hands of God. And you will find that life is so much easier for you when you do that. That's what I think. That's what I think. Things hoped for. I put the word el paizo, hoped for. The things not seen is interesting. This is the reason, the word blipo is the reason that the writer put pragma, things, with it. He didn't put it with the other one, but he did with this one. He did with this one. Things not seen. Things not seen. Hmm. Point number four. Oh, I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to talk about it. Our final Greek gr grammatical point involved in the English word things in Hebrews 11, 1 is pragma. It's, the, it's translated in the Bible, things. 
it is only used with the conviction of things, not with the assurance. You can't miss pragma in the Greek language. I mean, it stands out there by itself. And pragma refers to the practical matters in the reality of your life, just your daily life. Everything that flows through your life on a daily basis. Some days are better than others. Uh, as far as the amount of stuff that flows through them, every day is good with God, right? But some days, stuff that flows through it, you have to take a deep breath, don't you? Some days. And those are the most exciting days of your life by faith. When he stacks it up on you. Test is your maximum growth. Only reason he, he runs some days heavier than others is he, he's just taking a look at how well you're adjusting to your new growth. That's the only reason. How you doing? We do it with our children. We test them all the way through their, through their life with us. We're not going to hand the keys to them right off the bat. Think how many times we tested them before we gave them the keys to the car. Huh? Then you held your breath. It's the practical matters and the realities of your life. It's used three times in the Hebrew. It's used three times in the book of Hebrews. This word is used in the 6th chapter, verse 18, 10th chapter, verse 1, and 11th chapter, verse 1. Kind of an interesting subject within itself. It is interesting that it was used with conviction with the tagline, things not seen, <coughs> where we have steadfast belief in the word conviction. When he says conviction of things, He's talking about the practical matters of the reality of your life. The stuff that flows through your life every day. Now we know that everything that flows through is good. Right? Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good. Right? Yeah. It's not that what flowing through your life is not good. It's all good. It's just how much is flowing. And how much is flowing some days is heavier than others, is all about looking, God looking at your growth potential. Because, listen, he's got assignments for us. And he can't give them to you because you don't, he can't promote you because you're not paying attention. Are you with me? It's all about promoting. Just like on a job, it's all about promoting. And sometimes, we get kind of overwhelmed. And what should you do? You should settle down. You should go into your life a little prayer time with yourself. Get yourself acclimated to understand why he's flowing so much through your life at this point in time. And you can handle every bit that he's putting through your life. Every bit of it you can handle. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 tells you that. You have the capacity. He, he, he's got the word in you. Faith comes by hearing and then the hearing of the walking, right? The application side. He's never going to run you more than you're capable of handling. Never. Sometimes he stretches out and you think, uh, you, for me, I go like, really? You think I'm, I'm capable of that? That's the way I talk to him. Whoa. Whoa. You really think I'm capable of that? And I get excited from that. Because on the backside, that comes promotion in the kingdom. I go like, whoa. Well, Father, you caught me on, on a spur here. I had no idea. I was capable. But wow. And so I, I get kind of excited about those days. Then I get excited about tomorrow when it slows down. But I get excited because I understand what he's doing with my life. He's, he's not trying to choke me down. He's trying to lift me up. He's trying to say, look, you're, you're way above this. 
look, I got, I got some things that I got some things I need to get done with. Come on. This is, this is peanuts, but look. I'm going, well, I got choked on peanuts. <laughs> I know. Just the way you look at things. Faith causes you to look at life completely different, right? That's the point. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. See the word blippo on your paper, blippo. On point number four, second column down, not seen. He used pragma, the practical matters of life. Faith is conviction of things not seen. All these things flowing through your life are pragma, are just things. They're the, the practical things of your life, whether you understand practical or not. They're the... They're the things that God is flowing through your life. The conviction of things not seen. Now, the word blippo, now the word ook is a very strong negative. This is a very strong negative, very strong negative, not seen. Do not get into walk by sight. Blippo is about sight. But blippo is a word that's used for the natural realm of, of seeing. Seeing with the natural, the natural sight. Where God talks about faith is the, in, is the spiritual sight. The, if, if Ephesians 1.18 is the, is, the, is the horeo, is the, what you see in the eyes of your soul through the word of God. Blippo is what you see in the natural realm, not the spiritual realm. This is the idea of 1 Corinthians 2.14, that natural man can't understand the things of God. The things of God. But the believer can. So what, how would we identify this natural realm? Talking about faith, the natural realm. What would this person what would this person not seen? What would this person, this is walk by sight, right? Not by faith, not by sight. So what would be sight be? Well, it could be, here, here are the two major players. <laughs> Rationalism, not faith. Empiricism, empiricism, not faith. They're the two strongest argument of the human mind. Rationalism, well, that don't make any sense to me. Yeah, I hear that all the time. Faith isn't supposed to make sense. You understand? If you're looking for logic, then forget faith. Well, Abraham, I want you to go to a, I want you to go on a trip for me. Where are we going? I'll tell you on the way. We're gonna leave the country? I'll tell you on the way. We well, could you just tell me what road we're gonna take? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to go from, we're going to go from Ur to Haran. Huh. Haran, not Iran. Haran. Oh, really? Hmm. Okay. I know that road. I've traveled it many times. I get people live up there. Oh, yeah, I know. Well, here we are in Haran. Hmm. I'll talk to my brother about getting a place to live. I like Haran. I've visited many times here. I think this would be, this would be okay. Uh, it's not as big as, you know, I can't, it don't have as many sports and activities as we do, in, you know, band concerts and stuff and good movie theaters, great places to eat like we do in Ur. But listen, this is nice. It's more of a family place. It's nice. Oh, oh, we're not staying. Oh, oh, oh we're not staying? No, no, we're not staying. No. Your father is going to be ill and he's going to die and then we're going to move. Oh, okay, where are we going? Well, I'll tell you when we go. And that's been his, that was his whole life. You would have thought he would have learned that all the little things that flow through your life, learn to trust God with them. See, we only trust God with the big stuff. Fragma says trust him with everything. Fragma, pragma, pragma. I keep saying fragma, but pragma means trust him with everything flowing through your life. You walk by faith. You never walk by sight. Never, never, never. 
If it don't make sense, it don't have to because God always makes sense. God always makes sense. He tells Noah, build this boat. He said, there's no water. What do you mean build a boat? He said, well, we'll call it an ark because nobody will know boat. So we'll call it an ark. He comes back and said, well, nobody understands an ark either. Well, all right, just build this big thing. And, uh, Ron, is it like practice his presence? Do what? Practice his presence. Practice his presence, sure. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I've, I've tried to make this very simple for you because I want you to understand that that fragment is saying all the practical things of your life, all the stuff that's going through your life <laughs> is not bad. We know that. But listen, they're important to your faith system. Everything is important. You know, sometimes I get these calls, and, it, you know, it's just that junk calls. It used to be junk mail. Now it's junk phone, right? Now it's junk phone. And... And they would, they would get where they would irritate me. And uh, the spirit would speak to my spirit and say, what are you talking about? You're irritated? About what? Oh, that doesn't sound like the attitude I ought to have. You get impatient in your life about things? Huh? huh? Too long in the line? Hmm? People, people peeping at you, blowing the horn at you when there's no reason to. That's what I'm talking about. Now it makes sense. It should now, having gone through Hebrews 11.1, 1, it should now make sense. For the writer of Hebrew, watch this now. <laughs> Don't miss what I'm about to tell you now. I'm going to let you go in a minute. Now it makes sense. For the writer of the book of Hebrew, watch this now, to make creation the first example of the faith cycle. You see verse 1 and 2? Look at verse 3. I'm in Hebrews 11. Look at verse 3. Does it say by faith? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it should say by faith. Yeah. That's the first one. It's the first one up on the faith cycle. You know why? Because of phragma. Connected with the existence of God. Now, in case you want to question that, Paul did it. Now, pay attention. Are you paying attention? All right. I know I am, but I'm not sure anybody else is. In Romans 117, where Habakkuk 2 4 is used. Right? No, I, I just trust me right now. Okay. You don't have to look it up. Right. If it's not there, it's one of those matters going through your life. It'll be there. Watch this now. You know, you know what he writes after he does it? Just like the writer of Hebrew. Just like the writer of Hebrew does. He introduces it ahead of the time and then explains it in chapter 11. He mentions it in Hebrews 10.38 and then writes a whole chapter on it. Agreed? Paul, and, and, and he starts with creation. Agreed? Paul in Romans 1.17 introduces Habakkuk 2.4 and he writes a whole lengthy discussion on creation called Romans 1 18 through 32 yeah <laughs> by faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word see the word of God that's Rima that's categorical doctrine called creation that's Rima that's not Logos. That's Rima. That's a category of doctrine. By faith, we understand that we understand 
that the worlds were prepared by the word, Rima, the category of creation of God, so that what is seen, definite article to with blipo. Da 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 da. What is seen, blipo, was not made out of the things which are visible. The pragma. You know how God created everything that you see? All matter. Matter didn't come from matter. Matter comes from matter. That's where it, not had, it didn't originate. It originated in bara, the Hebrew word that God creates nothing. The only way, bara, the whole creation story of Genesis 1, is that God created, the creation came out of the existence of God. He created out of non-existence. He created out of his soul. Now, once it's created, matter can matter. But where did matter come from to matter? <laughs> Who, uh, well, anyhow, there it is. One verse. That powerful verse I want it. And it teaches the doctrine of the faith cycle is the key doctrine. The faith cycle is the key doctrine to live by faith. At least that's my opinion. Based on what I know. But we're going to take a look at this in, in different passages. We're going to take a look and see how this thing works. Uh, and... Uh, John Dyer put this in my head that I should do a, a, a more a, a more technical discussion from the Word of God on the faith cycle. So thank you, John. If you're watching, if you're not, shame on you. You let one of these pragma things float through your life. And... Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful tonight for what a wonderful study of Hebrews 11 1 it's exactly what Jesus told us in John 14 26 that the Holy Spirit would teach us and recall and I thank you for that for certainly it was his marvelous teaching putting all this subject matter together in the most unique way in a simple way to understand it I hope that's my prayer And so, we sure laid it out in Hebrews 11.1. 1. And I pray, Father, that those who have heard us tonight have heard with clarity of their minds and their spirit working through the ministry of the Holy Spirit has begun to understand some of the simplistic things about faith in the Bible. For it deals with the existence of God working actively within our lives on a daily matter in all matters, no matter how big we think they are or how small. They all are designed for the existence of God to deal with. We thank you for all this, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>